Log Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim J.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim J.K. Welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, we have a pleasure of having Matthew Lesko. We're going to talk about free money for entrepreneurs. If you'd like to just chime in in the conversation, please call at 347-324-3460, 347-324-3460, or you can go ahead and pose your question in the chat room. Right now, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be back in a moment with our guests. You're listening to the Core Business Show. You're listening to the Core Business Show. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Well, good afternoon again. Tim Jacquet, your host of The Core Business Show. Today, we're going to talk about, again, free money for entrepreneurs. We have a pleasure of having Matthew Lesko. He's on the show, and we're going to talk about his book. Matthew, welcome to the program. Hi. How are you? Actually, I don't do books anymore. That's the information revolution. (laughs) Nobody (laughs) buys reference books anymore. (laughs) Well, we old heads, we try to have stuff on our I know. You're the only kid. I can't live off you alone. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and actually, that's what happened in the information industry. I mean, I mean, look at the newspapers are going out of business. Bookstores are going out of business. You know, and reference books. That's what I was in. you know, for 30-some years now, it ain't there anymore. Yeah, you, know, you got to rethink the whole thing. Wow. Well, kind of tell us about your story. You have a very interesting story. If you don't mind sharing it with the community, and now where are you from? How did you get started? Well, I, actually, I'm from Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. I am an old fart already, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went to school in Milwaukee, Marquette, the only place I could get in. I flunked out of a Jesuit prep school and <laughs> this Jesuit college in the Midwest was looking for, I think, a uh, geographic diversity, so they had real low requirements for somebody out of the Midwest. Barely got through there <clears throat> on and off probation for four years. You know, couldn't get into grad school. It was Vietnam, so I joined the Navy, so I didn't have to get drafted and camp out. I'm <laughs> not a good camper. Three years, two months, nine days in the Navy, got out, went back to grad school on the GI Bill MBA in computer science. That's the middle of the 70s. And then I really was starting a businesses. I had a couple of businesses that failed. And then I was starting a business on how to get information to top management to run their company. I mean, and this is back in the mid-70s where that was the first time in this country we really worried about things outside of your business. I mean, at the time, you went to trade shows, you know, to work, look about your market a little bit. And the rest, the business ran on internal information. Well, at the time, after the oil embargo, what I saw was that, you know, what was really determining the future of any organization was, you know, what's going on in the world, not what's going on in your company. So I was designing what I called management, external management information systems. And I was going to monitor for a company for your competitors, for your market, the technology, legislation, everything outside of your organization that really could screw up your business the same way the oil embargo did. I mean, back then, nobody knew where (laughs) the Middle East was. And all of a sudden, these little countries brought brought this country to their knees by just raising the price of gasoline. So to stop that. And then I banged on corporate doors for a year or so trying that. Nobody knew what the hell I meant. So I said, ah, Christ, I do research. 
So I was in, I had a one bedroom apartment in downtown DC and these fortune 500 companies would say, Hey, yeah, we want to buy this company. Can you find out about it? Or we were thinking about getting into the business. Like I remember, God, Procter and Gamble called me up once I want to know about like barbecue utensils. They were thinking about getting in the barbecue utensil business. And so I was, I sold them my time. And what I would do is go out and get the information about starting a barbecue utensil business, what money programs there were and things like that. And I didn't know anything about Washington, but I was a consultant. I was charging as much as I could get. And I'd go fish around for the information. I'd find it in Washington. I mean, there's a barbecue utensils expert sitting down at the Department of Commerce who spends his career <laughs> studying barbecue utensils. Now, I swear to God, this is why we're in debt. <laughs> this is all the stuff we have in this town. And so I'd go down and find this barbecue utensil expert, and I'd get, he'd give me market studies that the government spent tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on. And I'd take the government's name off, put my name on it, and thank the government and sell it to these corporate guys for tens of thousands of dollars. And what shocked me is they'd make billion dollar decisions based on this stuff I was getting for free. Why doesn't everybody use this? So I got sick of help, helping rich folks. And I said, how do we get the average person to realize all the stuff that is locked up in this government that, that could help their lives? And so the way to do that at that time was by books. When I wrote about 100 books, you know, a couple of New York Times bestsellers. And actually, I flunked English in college. So when my first book went to New York Times, I sell this, man. I called that English teacher and flunked my butt. <laughs> it didn't matter. It was America. Yeah. And actually, there you go. I plagiarized the whole thing. Yeah, I took well, it was book free. from the government. Yeah, because nothing in the government is copyrighted. So you could take any government publication and just rebrand it and sell the hell out of it. And I act like a fool on television and people bought the book, became a New York Times bestseller and you could have got it the GPS government printing up. So that's America. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So we, this brings you into the 80s when, as I heard of you, and a lot of other people, all of a sudden you appeared on Larry King. You just were all over the place, uh, putting books out left and right. And uh, like you mentioned, a lot of this stuff is just free. Well, how is this stuff just all this information, all these grants? Why the government really don't tell us about it? It's just well, yeah. There's a, I mean, yeah, we're all biased on our opinion about that, but it's basically they don't have advertising money. I just think if you're if you're a bureaucrat, there, well, I want to give away a hundred million dollars or something this year. Oh, and by the way, I need five million dollars to advertise. I mean, we're giving away a hundred million. <laughs> That's a tough sell. <laughs> so they really don't have advertising money. Nobody's in there, and they're not. So what happens is just that you have to put your effort into finding it. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do is really teach the public about how to use the system, what you know, what is available. And it's not only money. I think the information is better than even the money. If somebody gives you a bunch of money to do something, you're probably going to fall on your face anyway, but you got to know how to use it. So whether it's managing your business, you can get better help doing that. You could get better help on Medical information is the best information in the world that's free, better than your doctor knows. Legal information you can get free, better than your lawyer knows. These are the people that write the laws. You know? Why hire somebody two, three hundred bucks an hour to go find out the law for you when you can make a free phone call and talk to somebody who wrote the law? Wow. <laughs> and even there's an agency to come out and sue the suckers for you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's that kind of thing. That, I think, is a tremendous resource that we're all sitting on whether it's technology information or health information, or anything. I mean, it's just sitting here, and people don't realize it because we all have a bad connotation about Washington. And see, the fact is, people who have money in this country, they don't give a shit where it comes from because <laughs> they don't they can make money from it. So they're using the hell out of it. I mean, that's why my clients, the same thing I sell for $20 now, I used to sell for 20000 They pay for it because they're going to make $20 million. <laughs> so they don't care. Yeah. So they use it. They're shameless <laughs> because they're in it for another reason. And that's why I think the individual, yeah, the individual should realize, I mean, this is a, a tool we have in our society, whatever your politics is. Or, and even if you don't like it, well, then get rid of it. Nobody gets rid of this stuff. It grows every year. I've been following this stuff 35 years, whatever it is. And it just grows no matter who's in now. Everybody wow. says they're against waste, fraud, and abuse, no matter what side of the aisle. And it just keeps growing. 
And, and that's our problem. We got all this old shit we're paying for, and nobody needs it anymore. It doesn't go away. Then we got new problems well, that we should be paying for. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So if you take, for example, if someone wants to go to do some research on a particular industry or a particular thing to sell to the government, they just go to the GPO office and no. they have all their research there? Or? No, GPO is just a fraction. It's really, most of the stuff is not even printed. It's really, the web does help. I mean, because a lot of stuff that's on the web, but it, it, if you Google now, like grants, you put in, you're starting a business, you put business grants into Google, you get like 50 million websites. What the hell are you going to do with 50 million websites? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, you're not going to live long enough. And so you go through the first couple of pages, and on the first couple of pages are people that are paying a lot of money to be on the first couple, to be on those first couple of pages, because that's real estate, right? They can make money if they're on those pages and they have something to sell you that you're interested in. So the people who are giving things away, like government, they don't spend money to be on those first couple of pages. So it's unlikely you're going to run into those unless you get to page 35 or something like that. So you miss that. So that's why it is understanding the system a little bit. It's still, I think, still a people business because there's so much information. If you find that person who spends a lifetime studying barbecue utensils, they'll tell you the best website because they know them all. Now, you go on the web and try to find the best website. I mean, you know, like some guy in his garage or some huckster just collecting your name for something, which 80% of the time is going to be one of those two. And so the stuff that you really need and the stuff that's really good. So it, it, the web gets better every day, and, but it really handles quantity and not quality. So mm-hmm. that's why it, there's limits to what that is. But that's why the government doesn't even know what it has. So most of us will call up and call up an agency and ask some receptionist, do you have a grant or something like that? And they'll look under their chart and, see no, and say no, and you'll go away, and whatever. And, See, the problem is that 80% of the free money the government gives out is not even called grants. So it's even understanding the language and understanding the system a little more. And and that's what I'm really trying to do is educate people about how to use this system and not just make a phone call or two and say, ah, there's nothing there. And I told you, I knew it was just a bunch of horseshit. (laughs) I want to do a government law that stays away from me. And that's foolish because it's an incredible resource for anything almost in this country and to ignore it is I sort of see it like ignoring the expressways. If you hate the expressways and you can drive from Washington to New York City and I'm not gonna get on that ninety five, I hate those express Well you can, you can get there, it's gonna take you forever. Yeah. So that's what I sort of see the government as. I mean there are other ways you could live without it and everything, but boy, <laughs> it's just gonna take you longer. Well if a person looking for I mean looking at your series of books and PDFs now what can a small business entrepreneur do to look at, to try to go through your books? What will they find in your books on how to get grants or get loans or get space or things to help their business grow? Well, all those issues are there. I mean, I think no matter what it is, it's almost like a chicken and egg. I mean, first of all, it's different everywhere. So your city, town, and state will have different programs versus another city, town, and state, and then the kind of business you are. So the best thing to do would be to check in with your state economic development office, no matter what you are. You're starting a business or you have a business and you haven't used the government at all. Call them up, economic development office. Everyone has one. Want to make an appointment to see somebody, go down and spend a half hour, an hour to say, hey, how can you guys help? What do you got? Don't come in saying, hey, I want money so I can go to vacation better and all that kind of bullshit. They want to help you because you're going to create a job. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every business is so important in our country now to bureaucrats because that's where jobs are coming from. So to help you start your own business, be self-employed, or someday you're going to hire five more people, they're very concerned and want you to grow and help you to do that. Because you're going to create jobs. That's one person, another person we don't have to worry about on welfare or something like that. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and that's what it's all about. So that's why you know, businesses are very important to the bureaucrats. It keeps them in business and it keeps the elected officials in business. 
So your economic development office, because there's their stuff. I mean, you got to train your employees, pay money for that. You want to sell your goods and products overseas. You want to know how to get a government contract. All these things. You want to make your office more energy efficient. I mean, it's you need new technology that you don't understand. You need a legal advice you don't have. You have to write a business plan you don't know how to do. All that stuff will be done for free. But it's first getting, I think, to spend that half hour, hour, whatever, to get a feel for the kind of help. I mean, that's the thing is people don't know what to ask for. So they're asking for something they think somebody else has when it's so much bigger than that. So they didn't know they could ask for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's why it's starting to get to know the system. Or even if you go to the Office of Economic Development in your state capital and just peruse the kinds of offices, and that gives you a clue the kinds of things they're working on. But no matter what you see, make an appointment to see somebody, you know, to get them belly to belly. And if you ever have a problem, call your elected official, your congressman, senator, state representative, you know, wow. you're a voter. They know all those offices. They know and they have back numbers, back room numbers for them. When you and I call these offices, we call in the front office. Now, the, these offices really don't work for you and I. They pretend they do <laughs> because we're the voters. But they really work for the elected officials because they're the ones who vote on their budget. So they're more concerned about an elected official than they are you or I because their budget gets passed on by elected officials. So they want every elected official to think they're great. So they set up special, special phone lines for elected officials. <laughs> so that's why if that office screws you over. You go to elected officials, they make a secret phone call, and your problem is solved right away. And see what happens. The elected official now knows you'll vote for that sucker no matter what he does. Because <laughs> he, he got you a grid for 50 grand or solved your problem or whatever. So they love helping you. Wow. That's a great <laughs> and advice. You'll tell five friends, right? And that's, this is how these people, this is why, I mean, in my mind, Congress is blocked and doesn't do anything. These people are so secure in their jobs, they don't care even what the public says because their constituents, you know, that they're helping, that voters, you know, they have, see, that's why everyone likes their congressmen but hates Congress. And that's why they have a, not, congressmen and senators have like a 99% retention rate, you know. The only way they go is die or leave office or they rarely get voted out of office. Yeah. Wow, especially the com- comments. And it's because of that, constituent services. Wow. Any other things that... to learn and use. Pardon? Yeah. Okay. Anything else, like, for example, so now we have the Economic Development Office, we have our congressmen, we don't mm-hmm. have any success. Now, you said the U.S., not the uh, the state congressman. Yeah, or the, it, it depends. If it's a state office screwing you over, then you go to your state elected official. If it's a uh-huh. federal office, you go to your federal elected official. That's the way to do it. And if okay. anything, you have a problem. Who, who, you're looking for money for your kids for college. Call them. I mean, they've solved the best services like this, or even like now this 211 number. I just said every I mean, that's another place. I mean, you, you're looking for, <laughs> you got a buddy who needs to be a drug rehab that doesn't have money. You can call 211 and they'll find a program for them. Oh, wow. The same thing. So this is why it's getting harder for me to sell this stuff. If you start using it, you, and truthfully, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I mean, the government should be doing what I'm doing. And they try in, in their way. So that, you know, your mortgage. You now you have a problem. You call that 211, you call your congressman, all these services. Now, what we do is we call some huckster we saw on TV, like me. I <laughs> like this. You know, Are you in debt? Call me. Lord. We love your debt. Whatever. We'll fight those shit. And they're going to get money from you. Anybody you see advertising is going to get money from you one way or another. They have to because they got to pay for that ad. I know what those ads cost. They don't put you on TV for free unless you act foolish on Letterman like I do. Yeah. And so if you're buying ads, they got to pay for it. You call them up. They help you with your credit card problem. Man, they're going to get money some way or another. And if not, then they're going to sell you something to make sure they get money from you because they have to. Or the government gives grants to professionals where you live to help solve your credit problems for free. But they don't have Wow. Them. You'll never see them. See? And this is what bothers me. This is, and this is what keeps me going. Ah, now, instead of wasting your money, you're dead up to your keister, and you're going to go to some huckster on TV who promises to get you out of trouble. When there's people down the street 
who get grant money do the same thing for free, never going to sell you anything, and all they have is your interest in mind. Yeah, I mean that that to me is at least trying first. The worst case is if it doesn't work. You can go spend your money if you want, or whatever the hell they want. Yeah, and wow. that's yeah, and that's what's frustrating for me, and that's what keeps me going. I mean, getting company messes you over, or on the internet, or anything. I mean, your insurance company, you don't. They don't pay your claim. What are you going to do? I mean, most, we live in the biggest democracy in the world, and we think we have to hire an attorney or something to fight this big behemoth insurance company. No, there's an office in the government you could call. Even if you're wrong, they'll investigate that insurance company. Mm-hmm. Now, what's cool about that to me is that, see, to me, that government office is more powerful than any insurance company because it's like you. Okay, you're a small business, I assume, or something like that. Just think if you got a bill from the IRS that says you owe 200 bucks or something like that. Now, even if the IRS was wrong, you're probably going to pay them, right? Because yeah. you <laughs> to fight them or to complain, shit, it's worth it. And everything goes away for 200 bucks, right? <laughs> you don't want to mess with that. Well, just think if you're a big behemoth insurance company and you get a letter from the government that says, hey, Joe says you didn't treat him well, and he's looking for his $1,000 or $500 he did for that insurance claim. Why didn't you do it? Well, first of all, that insurance company's going to cost them $10,000 just to send mail back and forth to the government, right? And yeah. if they screw up at all, the government gives them a license to be in business. See, this is their regulatory agency over the insurance company. So if they screw up at all, they could go out of business. So they're looking at this thing now. I paid this guy 500 bucks and all goes away. <laughs> I spent a couple thousand bucks talking to the government and trying to explain our problem, <laughs> whatever. And maybe if I screw up, <laughs> I may even cause a big problem and screw up my whole business. It becomes cheaper to just pay you off. Yeah. And so that's why I see the power that an average consumer has or even small business, whatever, to use this kind of stuff to their advantage against I mean, to me, big companies, I, I don't see any difference between them and big government, to tell you the truth. Wow. Yeah, they're just so do you think it, lumbering. Sorry. Do you think any difference between the economy today, all these programs are still in place, because, uh, or you think they're starting to cut back? Uh, I mean, we have to cut back somewhere. But tell mm-hmm. you the truth, most of the programs, it, it's not, I, I would say, there is a main book in the federal government called the Catalog of Federal Domestic Assistance. And there's about 1,500 programs in there. They're major ones, and that's not counting federal, state, local, and stuff like that. Now, we're in hock and <laughs> overspending, so we have to cut that. The number of programs, if that diminishes less than a half or more than a half a percent, in other words, if we go from 1,500 programs to 1,450 or something, that'll be a lot if we lose 50 of those 1,500 to me. Because the big money is elsewhere. I mean, it's Medicare, it's Social Security, it's... Medicaid, Defense Department, it's obvious from what, and actually tell you the truth where it is in, it's in tax breaks. There's sort of like an underground payment that we make that is costing. If you look at income versus outgo, it's not so much, you know, it's just big programs we're paying out, but also the programs that aren't bringing in money because we're giving tax breaks. I mean, that, that's huge. I mean, like the deduction for insurance. I mean, that gives the insurance business a big tax deduction because we don't collect taxes on that money, the payments that the average person does pay. I mean, that's like hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. But it's, or, or the insurance or the mortgage deduction. Everybody thinks that's sacrosanct or whatever. But boy, if you look at oh, programs, even, I mean, that's supposed to encourage uh, house production, but maybe they'll become like income determinant or something like that. Like now, even on Social Security, man, I'm old enough to get Social Security. I don't need it. Now, I know millionaires. I mean, there's something, oh, I forget how many thousands and thousands of millionaires that are getting an extra maybe $2,500 a month in Social Security. That's real. I mean, in my zip code here, I know these lawyers are making a million dollars in law firms downtown and get an extra $2,500 a month for Social Security. And that's like three lunches for these guys. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> what I started is I started a a uh, scholarship program at the community college where I live, and I'm calling it I Don't Need My Government Money Scholarship Fund. So this is where I'm giving my Social Security money. A kid could go to college for a thousand bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's all it costs to go to a junior college. Yeah? 
And these people are getting all this like, what the hell they need that for? But they're never going to give it back to the government, right? So I'm trying to shame people into <laughs> giving their money to something that's worth, wow, I mean, what's better to, than to educate a middle-class person in this country? And that's what to wow. me, community colleges are such a great, such a great bargain. I mean, these private schools, I think, are the biggest ripoff. You know, these for-profit schools, I mean, they're charging you 40 grand to go to school or something like that. And I'd say, oh, I think that they spend like maybe two or $3,000 on education a year per student, mm-hmm. where a community college or private college, they'll spend $15,000 or $20,000 on education. So what, and you're paying five times the price and getting a fraction of the value of the is just incredible. And to me, it's all marketing. I mean, these private colleges, 80, 90% of their money is coming from government. Wow. And just, you so they're forcing kids, ah, take a loan. You could come to college and give us 40 grand of the money that you're going to be in hock for. And they never get around to finishing or many times even finishing a year, you know, and still owe yeah. that money. So, now, and, you mentioned also it, big names of uh, Halliburton, Donald Trump, all of these yeah. uh, big companies have taken a lot of government money, use government resources in order to better their business. Can you name some of the things that they've done? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I remember when Cheney and Bush came to office. I said, God, Cheney's vice president. Bush was president. And, and I looked how much money they each got before they became president. But George Bush got like uh, like $200 million from the government to help build that baseball stadium when he was running the baseball team. Cheney got like $3 billion. No, not million, billion dollars when he was running the Hellenberg. So I said, yeah, well, Cheney's a lot smarter than Bush and <laughs> times the money. I mean, I, actually, it's funny. I, I, long ago, I was doing talk shows. Like back in the 80s, I remember, uh, Paul Newman saw me on a talk show. He called up my office and all the ladies got really excited. And he got a program to sell his popcorn like overseas. Got you know, like a hundred grand yeah, to do that. I mean, are you a golfer at all? Yeah. You know, I'm a golfer sometimes. I got Callaway golf clubs. He started with a couple of FedEx. Start working my Apple. Yeah, you know, the government even has venture capital money. Uh, wow. And it, it, yeah, uh, and what they do is like venture capitalists could they put in a dollar, the government put in a dollar. So you know, a million, the government put in another million. So you got two million dollars now to invest in venture capital. So you, half the risk is gone. You know? So it, it's those hmm. kinds of deals. I mean, the truth for a small business, one of the best deals is really government contracts. Yeah, I mean that that's forever. <laughs> so. People go after grants, and that's one time. And but a contract, but you learn that system, and you keep getting it, and getting it. Yeah. It's just to make sure you get your certifications in order to get it, so you can always continue right. to get it. And, and there's people there like, how do we become an eight A or something? Like that? And go to something. No, the government has people they give grants to help you get that eight A certification or whatever it is. A small bit, same thing. You know, now, don't know is there anything that yeah. any other options, for example, for Small businesses or even nonprofits, what they can do to get them their foot on the ground. I know there's a lot of state agencies that, is for halfway houses, give grants to a lot of public service type projects. Any advice for them for nonprofits yeah, every, what they can do? Every call your governor's office. Every governor's office has a special office, and I got my. If you go to lesco.com, I got a free video. You can watch one of the guys. One of these offices explain what they do. They all help any nonprofit or even people looking for contracts help you through that process. So if you were, you're a nonprofit organization, want to know how to become a nonprofit organization, want to know how to get grants, to learn that system or whatever, they have free consulting help to help you through that process. Every state, because see, if you grow your nonprofit or you're going to help people in the community, or whatever, they want to help you. Yeah, I mean, we all think we have to go to the mall for everything <laughs> and spend money. And you, know, you don't have to. You can because if you want to buy something, there's somebody who will figure out how to sell it to you. But wow. to me, particularly in these tight times, nobody knows what works. Everyone's guessing. There's no magic formula, so you really have to try a lot of things. And the more things that you spend money on, the faster you're going to be on a business. So to me, the key is, in business, I mean, look at all the idiots that are in business. I mean, it doesn't take a mental genius to be in business. I've worked for enough idiots <laughs> to know <laughs> that, too. So the only key in business is staying there long enough until you figure it out. 
So if you figure out how to try as many things as possible for as little money as possible, you're going to stay there long enough until you figure it out. If you say, well, I want to advertise my business and how do I advertise? So you go to the first place. Oh, yeah, that'll cost you $16,000 or whatever to do that. You blow your wad there and it doesn't work. And then what do you do? You're out of business. So how do you figure that out without doing that? You know, well, maybe you get a government contract. Now you've got consultants that will help you do your sales work for you to figure out all that stuff so you don't have to hire a consulting company or a sales force to do that. So what now type I'm of sure. opportunities for, like, sales consultants means for you to get consultants? Okay. There's two things. I mean, every if you're figuring out how to sell something and you not know how to sell what you have, you could go to the Economic Development Office and they'll hook you up with free sales consultants. So they help you think through a plan or whatever, what you need, you know, and all that kind of stuff. If you want to sell to the government, then there's other offices called PayTech, P-A-T-E-C. I forget what those acronyms mean. They're all around the country. There's dozens and dozens of them, usually at universities, that will again will sit down with you and help you figure out who in the government buys your stuff and help you with the paperwork and the procedure. I mean, none of it's mad. None of it's going to be going to the instant, get a check on the mail next Thursday. It's a system to figure out, but you don't have to hire and spend money on someone to figure it out because there's people there who already get money <laughs> to tell you how to do it. And see, the Fortune 500 people I work for, that's what I would do. I would go to these people <laughs> and get it all for free <laughs> and then sell to these Fortune 500. I, yeah, one company wanted to sell electric blankets in Germany. What's the government help them do that? Listen, you want to sell your stuff in Germany? $350. They will find three people for you in Germany or in any country in the world that will sell your goods and services. They'll check out their background. They'll check everything. Yeah, and so to be a partner to sell your stuff there. Man, if you went on the on the web to figure that out, you'll get some huckster who's going to charge you a hundred and some thousand dollars at least just to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, but, see, they're not advertising, so you don't know. Okay. We're going to take a question real quick. We have a couple of questions in the pipeline real quick, uh -huh. and we're going to put one person on. From Eric Code 845, you are on the air. Wow, is this really Matthew Fisco? Hey, the man <laughs> I saw. What are you, a predator? Finally found me or something? <laughs> no, I saw you running up and down the steps in that government building. Uh, Was that the GSA <laughs> building or what? <laughs> no, that's probably, I hang around the Capitol and do that. I try to get the Capitol building behind me a lot of times. <laughs> okay, the question that I, that I have is, and I've heard a lot of comments about, that guy can't get you no free money. Impossible. Impossible. No, Too many they're red. Right, though, because I can't. You got to get it. They won't give me your money. And I said, I'm getting retired now, and it ain't looking too good out there right now. Uh, There's a lot of people on the road. Yeah. I mean, how can a person take your book, make heads or tails of it, to even yeah. begin getting any kind of Federal yeah. Reserve notes, if they're going to be that at the All end right. of the year. Okay, so are, your situation is you're about to retire? Yeah. I mean, okay. is, is uh, so you're about to retire soon on fixed income, won't have enough. Okay. I know. Here, That's what, what I mean. I need your help. I need your yeah, help, okay. Matthew. Now, okay. what I, there's a couple oh, of procedures I sort of built up over the years. This one, every place has about 25 programs. If you email me, I'll send you a list of 25 basic programs in your state that will that has money. I mean, some of them are income related, but the income will go up to maybe 40 or 50 grand. I don't know what you're going to retire on, and some are not income related. But these are like 25 basic programs that you want to know about or that give out money for whether it's paying your utility bills or fixing up your house or whatever. That that's sort of like the basic thing. And then after that is the programs are really for doing something. So think through, do you want to go back to school? See, now if you're retired at 60 years, you know, like I, I'm 60, I don't know, I'm 69. I go back to school for free. Actually, I'm studying Chinese now for free. I'm getting a grant to study Chinese. It's not free, but it's a fraction of what I'd be paying for. 
And who's giving me the grant? The Chinese government. <laughs> I mean, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I'm old enough to retire. I'll never retire. But I said, well, how do I keep my brain going? Because I exercise every day, try to keep my body going. So while I'm on this earth, I could do shit and not <laughs> be just stuck somewhere. So how do you keep the brain going? So I say, what's the hardest thing I could try to learn? And that's Chinese. And I found this program for a hundred bucks, man. I got like free for almost one and one. There's only four of us in the class that it made the university here. It's subsidized by the Chinese government. And any schmuck could do it. <laughs> you don't have to be anyway. It's terrific. But also most of the public universities starting at like 60 or 62, you go back and get a doctor degree if you want for free. So, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but maybe you're 55, 60 or something like that. You're going to live 30 more years. That's like a whole new career. So, <laughs> you want to become a massage therapist? Man, go do it. Yeah, <laughs> Do it for free. And there's actually even training money to do something like that. It's a one stop, and this will be on this list of 25 places. Now, you could be a millionaire and get eight grand to go become a massage therapist or train for anything. What else do you want to be? You want to be a computer programmer or I don't know what. <laughs> Drive a golf ball truck or something. And uh, so you will go ahead and give your email address out so they can email you yeah, the at questions? Yeah, Matthew, or? M-A-T-H-E-W, at lesco.com. Okay. And just Are there a lot of the top 25. Top 25. Is yeah. anything where they would retire people, what they can do? Of course, people retiring – in the early 60s and so forth, have a good 40 years left. Uh, are there other programs that they can do as well that won't cost yeah, them much? Yeah, I mean, income? there's neat stuff to do. Like, you could go on a free archaeological dig. I did that. My kids, you can do it at any age. My two kids, when they're teenagers, went up to Alaska, went on an archaeological dig. We had to pay to get there, but man, they train you. I mean, you go to Outward Bound or something like this. I mean, look, it's kind of 20 grand to do that, yeah. Or uh, how about being a moose crossing guard at Yosemite? <laughs> They'll pay you 25 bucks a day to do that. <laughs> there's just a lot of fun stuff to do. And actually, there's training. Pro- if you're over 55, there's special training money for you to back and figure out how to do something new. And that's why, I mean, people retire. And boy, I mean, that's just an excuse to go out and do the stuff that, and contribute. I mean, retiring, doing nothing. I mean, that sounds silly. We're here to give to each other, to do something. And that's what keeps us alive is contributing, not doing nothing. Okay. Uh, and there's programs that help you get trained to do that or go back to college and do that for free. And yeah, God, there's just so much neat stuff to do. Anything for investors that they can do in order to get their patents or for them to get funding to get a potential project completed? Yes. Inventors, do not, <laughs> do not call an invention company. Because they're slick, and they'll figure out how to get ten grand from you before you're finished, no matter what you do. There are offices in the government do the same thing for free, and they're better. I'm biased, so I'm sure you could argue me out of that one if you want. But you know, they'll show you how to get pens. They'll show you how to get market studies. They'll do, and they'll do it all for free. They won't charge you ten grand. They'll show you what grant money is available. I mean, a guy came into my office on it. He came in. He said he was showing me this yardstick he made to measure kids and he got like $150,000 to develop this yardstick that measures kids. Understanding me. There are states now that have money to give you money to write out a grant application. So you think that some of those, particularly for invention, there are some of those applications are a little confusing. So what the state does is give you five grand to help you write the application to get 150 grand. See, that's what I mean about the government wants to help you do all this stuff because if you get 150 grand, you can hire people. And you can see videos on my side of these bureaucrats that say, if you're an inventor, come to us because we'll help you. Because if, if you get your idea done and you start producing it, then you're hiring people and that's growing and that's why we want to help you do that. We'll help you get the money. We'll help you do everything. Okay. And what about for disabled people who are disabled, are there any programs out there for them as well? Yes. I mean, it's like vets. It's me. I, I give speeches over at Walter Reed for the Wounded Warriors and stuff like that. Don't forget, I mean, there's special programs for people with disabilities, but they're also eligible for all the other programs. So whether you want to go to college or start a business, I mean, whether you have a disability or not, you're still eligible. 
for the normal program. So there will be, and disability.gov is a good place to start. Again, and particularly if I had a disability, I would call my elected official, tell them what you're looking to do, have them do some of that research for you. Oh. It, it, the, a lot of problems with all this, there's just no single place to go. I mean, I'm trying to be that, but you know, probably the closest you got, but it's still not. I mean, it, it, the world's too big. So that's why it's learning how to do this. Your reference library, you don't realize how good these people are. The 911 people particularly have, have domestic or kind of problems with your healthcare related or financial related, things like that, because they know mm-hmm. who's getting grant money in your area to solve that problem for families in that area. Yeah. Also in your book you have in here, you can start a business with zero money. Come explain that. Yeah, I mean, I did. I started with me, a phone, and a desk <laughs> in my one-bedroom <laughs> apartment and grew to 30 people down on K- 16th and K Street, yeah. My marriage crumbled, but <laughs> maybe all the people in my apartment didn't do well. No. But, but it, it, we're in service businesses now. I mean, people go and you, you God, people go on the web and looking for business opportunities and paying three, four, five thousand dollars for the man. No, you don't have to do that. Go to your business development center. Try to think of something you could sell. I mean, what do you love to do? I mean, like my kids. I mean, I remember my younger boy was graduating from high school and he's sitting here one summer watching ESPN and playing online poker. I said, what the hell are you doing here? Why do you have a job? It's summer. And I was laying out people. I said, you're not going to sit here. He said, oh, but dad, the people are, the jobs are so lousy and they don't pay much. So I said, why don't you start your own business? And he's telling me, dad, well, what can I do? I said, well, what do you do around the house? And I was waiting to hear that. He said, he had an interesting answer. He said, Dad, I do anything you don't want to do, <laughs> which is a great answer. I said, that's a business. So him and his buddy sat down and they started a business called We Can Do That. Yeah. And they went to Kinko's for 40 bucks and they put their high school graduation picture, two kids. You want your rocks moved and your garden or your garden your attic cleaned or whatever. And they went out one Saturday morning and went and put these flyers and doorknobs or whatever for 40 bucks and got 1500 bucks worth of business in like two, three hours of doing this stuff. I said, God, wow. you got a quarter of a million dollar business. You hire, and they were averaging like 15 bucks an hour because they were just quoting, oh, they had all cost 50 bucks or whatever. So hourly, you're making 15 bucks. So you can hire your buddies at eight bucks an hour. <laughs> you become management and you can grow this thing. <laughs> and that's business. That's what's about my other country. I've been to India recently and, and Bulgaria. And, and see, I mean, these people, man, they start businesses with two sticks together and you start a business. Here, oh, I can't start a business on a million dollars. Ah, you're not an entrepreneur. Wow. <laughs> yeah. An entrepreneur does stuff with what they got. You haven't got a million well, dollars where you figure out business that doesn't have a million dollars. And you can. In closing, can I tell us what else uh, type of programs you have on your site? And since you're, are you still publishing books or everything is now online? No, it's really all online now. Yeah, nobody buys a reference. Um, I got e-books online, but, you know, basically... It's a service online, and I could train video. I mean, I got like videos of government officials, like the bureaucrat I told you about that help your nonprofit. I got a video of them for thirty minutes. You can watch them explain how to do that. The vi- I have videos of like people that will help you your invention and how they do it. And, and this guy, an interviewer, he said, "Yes." I mean, this, he explains how. Don't call the invention company. I've talked to these guys. I can do it a lot better. I'm free. Here's what I do. Yeah. You don't have to trust me, the huckster, and that's what I love about the web. I could really show the horse's mouth talking about this stuff and what's mm-hmm. available. You know, and not just from me. Like the guy who calls, oh, everybody says Lesko can't get you. No, it's the government. You got to do it. So that's why I try to show the actual people giving out the money. You can talk to them. Here they are. Oh wow! So is that membership base website or yeah, it's how like is it twenty done? bucks? Yeah, and but all the videos are free because. The bureaucrats are so nice. You could go on my site and watch a couple hundred videos on, on everything from invention to starting a business to getting your house fixed. God, I, I interviewed the four, 211 guy who was saying that we talked about the number you could call about how to get free drug counseling you want or you have trouble with your mortgage. It'll set you up with somebody helping you for free with that. And that's why these bureaucrats want to help. No one believes that because we have that picture in our mind of 
the lazy Maytag repairman or something like that. Yeah, but uh, you know, whatever. They're human beings like everybody else. Some are good and some are bad like everybody else. But it's, okay. it's a tool, and we have so many problems to solve in the society. Why the hell are we going out and spending more money? Like even health care. God, we're getting health care. I mean, I've seen data. 25% of the people not covered for don't have health care are covered through an existing pro- program before we gave Obamacare. But they don't know. Wow. Anything else you'd like to leave us with uh, regarding no, your company? No, one eight hundred Uncle Sam and lesco.com. <laughs> so, so, what's your address again? Your uh, website. Uh, and the your web phone? is lesco l e s k o dot com, and the phone is one eight hundred Uncle Sam. Wow. What do you see yourself in the next hundred years? Where do you see myself in the next one hundred years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding with you. I so, think I got like twenty twenty five. Yeah, at least okay. good years yet. And anything I, else you're plan to do? I'm to hang around people that. Like my kids' age, I got kids twenty five, thirty, because they they have no assets and they're just looking forward and wondering where the hop opportunities are. And I pro- and the problem is someone my age has made yeah had something that was successful in the past, but unfortunately that ain't going to work again. <laughs> and I'm dragging that luggage along trying to figure out how I can make that work again, and it ain't going to. You know? mm-hmm. Young kids have a better view of the future. Because they're not dragging any of the past around, trying to make it work again. So it's I'm trying to hang around young people, figure out what the hell they see, because I don't see it, because I'm too clouded with all this old shit. Well, last question I do have. How did you get your question marks made for your branding? How did that come to you? Wearing the uh, question oh, it's mark? something I always wanted to do since I was a kid. It has nothing to do with my business. I mean, I gave a speech on branding up at Harvard Business School. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. I do this speech in three minutes. Yeah, it's something I always wanted to do, and I always wanted to have fun, and had nothing to do with my business. So they thought it was some big marketing plan or something like that. No, and, and most things that I think are successful are really from the heart, and that's why I think, particularly the older you get or whatever. We're all scared as hell in this country and in life. Everybody is. Nobody really knows what they're doing. I mean, we're all guessing. And that's why, because of that, we think that we have to be extremely smart. And the smart people really know. I mean, that that may be a little bit of the answer, but your heart is smarter than your brain a lot of times. It's hard to listen to your heart (laughs) because you don't think a heart is smart. (laughs) But it is on the important questions in life, whether it's, you know, choosing a mate, choosing a career, whatever, and things like that. I think they're hard on it. Or to me, like even choosing help. I used to read resumes and all that kind of thing. And boy, I just get in trouble all the time. I want to use my heart more when I think of this person. I like the line. Like, you listen to your heart more. That's telling you more about the truth in life than your head ever will. I mean, you got to use your head so you don't fall off a cliff and shit like that. But yeah, it's that heart. I don't think we give it enough enough work to do no, enough credit well matthew i really appreciate you coming on to the program and sharing all the, your wisdom and your knowledge regarding your programs <laughs> it's great i got nothing better to do anytime and your website again to leave us with is com. l-e-s-k-o perfect thank you so much thank you again okay take care Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. It's been another production of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. You can download this episode on iTunes or on Blog Talk Radio. Everybody, thank you for listening. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim J.K. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.